Hi, uh, thank you for watching. This is the first of a series of videos where I want to show you how I build the bass guitar here at LA Custom Basses. This is a very special project for me because it's the first time that I'm building a bass for an endorser. That's pretty, pretty, pretty good for me. He's Mr. Person Tupinamba. He's a great bass player from Brazil who specializes in jazz and Brazilian rhythms. And his bass is going to look something like this. It's going to be a six-string Dogor model with a beautiful, really astonishing piece of redwood for top, humbucker pickups, wooden bridge with piezo, the whole shebang. I don't want to bore you now with all the details. There will be plenty of time later for details and boring stuff. Prepare yourself for lots and lots of boring stuff. Now, according to a friend of mine, to build a base you can just take a big piece of wood, some sandpaper, and you just sand away. When you see the shape of a base appear, you just throw some strings at it and you got your base. Well, I like to make things a little more complicated, so let's watch. First I make the neck, which has three pieces of maple and two pieces of bubinga, so I cut them with the bandsaw. Uh, yes, I am a nerd, so I made my own bandsaw. It has my logo on it, you see? And then I'm running all the pieces through the thickness sander. See, the thing about bubinga is that you don't need to buy any special kind of bubinga. It's always beautiful. And have you noticed my thickness sander? Also made by me. So, here we have all the pieces of our puzzle and we're going to glue them like that. And that's going to give us a very strong neck, a very beautiful neck. And now our neck blank is dry and super strong. And now back to the thickness sander to get everything flat and even. I also need the sides to have the perfect taper, so I'm using this edge sander, another machine made by me. And with the help of a jig, I can hold the neck in the angle that I want. And now I'm cutting the angle for the headstock. Don't worry, you'll be watching lots and lots of sawing and sanding. And also a lot of routing. Here I'm routing the channels for the truss rod and the two carbon fiber reinforcements. And here goes the truss rod and the carbon fiber reinforcements. They are really, really hard stuff. Not even I can break them. But they're also very light, so they don't add significant weight to the neck and they make it much stronger. So I'm gonna glue them in the channels with epoxy. And now that the epoxy is dry, we are going to glue our beautiful Wenge fingerboard. Spread that glue very evenly. We want enough glue, but not too much. And put a lot of clamps for a lot of pressure. Now our fingerboard is dry, and I sanded the sides flush with the neck. For the headstock, the idea is to make it strong by gluing multiple pieces of wood together. Because every time you glue pieces of wood, you get a piece that's stronger than a single piece of wood. So. I'm going to take this piece that I cut from here, turn it around like that, and glue it here. And then I'm going to add two pieces of wood, of maple in this case, to the sides. So, in the end, I'm going to have a lot of grain running in the angle of the headstock to make it really, really strong and stable. And now cut out most of the wood from the back of the neck. Now, uh, I did some things that you didn't see because I'm fast, not because I forgot to film. 
uh, I sanded the back of the neck and the back of the headstock and I made this shape with the thickness sander which has the perfect radius for that and then I took a piece of veneer from the same redwood that I'm going to use for the body top and then I made this trash road cover with a piece of veneer from this very same place so when I put that cover on the grain matches perfectly and it just kind of disappears you don't see a big ugly black trash road cover there uh, and then I'm going to put a layer of sapelli here, a sapelli veneer, to match the back of the body. And then I'm going to let the neck rest for a few days before I make the fingerboard radius. Uh, because since I just removed this big chunk of wood from here, now the neck needs to, to accommodate that new situation. It needs time to stabilize again. But before I let the neck rest, I want to finish the headstock. So, first I'm removing most of the wood with the banzo. And then I'm using the router with the template copying router bit to copy the outline of the headstock. Finally, I check that everything is smooth. And now we are getting somewhere. And finally, I'm drilling the holes for the tools. And now we are really getting somewhere. Thank mm -hmm. you.